It's not completely a meritocracy. It is sometimes a bubble, especially like in New York. People here are like always assuming like, oh, you're gonna go to one of the big 10 schools. It definitely can get lonely, I think, when you move to these places where you don't know anyone. Mm -hmm. Hi everyone, it's Darcy. Welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. And as you can see, I have my sister Samantha with me. Um, this is our third video together, so definitely go check out the other two we've done so far. We did one talking about going to a women's college, one about big versus small schools, and then this one's going to be about both of our experiences moving to the east coast for college so if this is the first video you're seeing of mine or ours um my backstory is i went to william and mary and then transferred to nyu and yours is i am a first year student at mount hill college it's a small liberal arts school in western massachusetts and it's a women's college and it's a women's college um so we're both from the chicago suburbs born and raised like grew up here our whole lives but both of our parents are from the east coast so we grew up going to the east coast more than i think a lot of our peers did and so we both ended up going to schools on the east coast which is interesting uh we decided we want to talk about it because we feel like not that many people talk about it and it could be kind of interesting because there's a lot of i don't know buzz around east coast schools yeah, and it is like now, right now, it's like the college decision time and especially right now with everything going on, it's probably kind of hard to make a college decision like this and definitely moving from the Midwest to the East Coast is a really big decision, so yeah. we wanted to talk about it today. So I graduated last year, but I graduated early. So four years ago is when I committed to William and Mary and then, you know, moved out to Virginia. If you don't know, it's in Williamsburg, Virginia, which was a big trek. I think it's like around like 800 miles away. Um, certainly like a big difference. And I think I definitely had like a big culture shock, but I don't know. I like the school. I like the area. I mean, the temp temperature is a lot warmer there. <laughs> I just love like the history of the East Coast which was a big selling point for why I went there because it's the second oldest school in the country. And for reference, we're only gonna be talking about US schools um, and colleges in this video, but um, yeah, I don't know. I just decided I wanna get out of the Midwest. I've always been like, eh, about the Midwest. And disclaimer, we're gonna talk about leaving the Midwest a lot in this video. However, we know like a lot of people do like the Midwest. We're not trying to like shame anyone or hurt anyone's feelings or anything like that. This is just like our experience. Yeah, our, our own personal yeah, experience. Yeah, our own perspective. So like obviously you do you. Like Everyone's experience is unique. Yeah, and we're not like trying to say any bad things about schools that are on the East Coast or like act like they're, I don't know. Or even bad schools but the Midwest. Yeah, just like, I don't know. Take everything with a grain of salt and feel free to comment your own experiences down below, obviously, but yeah anyway let's just keep going um so yeah i went to virginia but even though i didn't end up super happy at william mary i still wanted to stay on the east coast like i never saw myself moving back to the midwest because there's just i don't know in my opinion a lot more opportunities on the east coast everything is so much closer together so i think that just makes it easier to like live yeah. a lifestyle where you have like so much opportunity so many things to go to and see and do and i don't know everything just feels more accessible and especially like having gone to nyu like just like the opportunities there um there's not like anything else quite like living in new york so i ended up staying after graduating do not foresee myself living here long term in the midwest even though i am here right now during the crisis so i still do like coming back to the midwest i just don't see myself like permanently living here and now you i mean i think similar experience yeah but you really wanted new england right? i really wanted new england which i love new england too but i probably won't end up living there yeah i don't know there's just something about it it's just so pretty like it is nature beautiful. wise yeah <laughs> and here's just cornfields for days cornfields <laughs> that was like cornfields for days <laughs> yes um and i think also just going out there like a couple times growing up because like that's where our parents are from yeah and so we were exposed to it i think a lot more mm -hmm. and had a newfound appreciation and new england also has like a really interesting like historical yeah culture. i mean that's too like the history yeah and we i mean we grew up like having like seafood and like new england clam chowder like stuff like that where i think a lot of people in the midwest their families are from the midwest that's what they're used to and um our mom's side of the family ended up out here anyways so like we still have like family here but they're not like generations like going back like a lot of our family on both sides like is from the south originally and then like kind of east coast new england area so yes yeah, so i think just growing up i fell in love with the area and just 
I know that's where I want to end up one day. So right. we both like foresee ourselves staying on the East Coast, which is interesting. I think I specifically chose like New England because like I want to be a teacher. And so you get like licensed in the state that you take the mm. test in. And so I'm like, well, I want to go to college where I want to live. So like, that kind of like yeah. narrowed my search. And I think a lot of people end up living where they went to college. I don't know the statistics on that. but Or like in the region at least. Yeah, I do think that's like pretty true. Okay, so I think we're going to talk about pros and cons now of the whole experience, like, moving from the Midwest to the East Coast, because it's definitely a big decision. Yeah. Oh, you go first. What do you say the pros are for you? I mean, or I cons. think Either way. the pros are it really forces you to be independent. Like, you can't just go home the weekends if you need something. Yeah, that's so true. So, like, if you're really wanting a big step of independence, like, that is a pro. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it can be a con. Yeah. It's like a double-edged sword, I guess. Yeah. And like when you're sick, you kind of have to take care of yourself. You can't just like have your yeah. parents like help. Yeah, I definitely think that's true. Like I'm so so independent, and I think that's like where I like thrive in New York. But if I hadn't moved to the East Coast, I don't think that'd be true. Uh, especially like freshman year. I mean, I think it's definitely really hard. And even now, like it's kind of sad. That I like get jealous of my friends who can like go home on the weekends sometimes mm -hmm. and like cost like four hundred dollars to do that for me. But I mean, it's still like to me worth it. But I do think the hardest yeah. part is the distance for sure. Distance is definitely the hard part. Depending on like also your family situation, how close you are or whatever. Yeah, but like we like coming home overall for like the holidays yeah. and I mean, right now we're both home with everything going on. So um, we're definitely fortunate that we have like the privilege in a way. It definitely is a privilege to yeah. be able to afford like that travel back and forth because and so that is another thing i mean it takes time first of all if you're driving and moving um and it takes money to be able to fly so i would say that's probably the biggest barrier i foresee mm -hmm. and then i think the second thing is like whether it's a pro or a con for you like the you know the different culture because it is more fast-paced and i mean it definitely depends on the area but for me that's like a pro but also, like, when I was living in the South and when I'm Mary, like, the culture shock was, like, a con because it was much more conservative. And I don't know. In that case, it just, like, wasn't the right fit. But New York is. And I think just, like, New England in general. Yeah. Is. It is faster paced, I feel like. Even, like, being in Western Mass, like, mm -hmm. it's still faster paced even though it's more rural than, like, an urban area. Yeah. It's just, like, a different culture. And because our parents are from that culture, I feel like we grew up more like that than some of our mm -hmm. peers maybe i do feel like where we live here is still like i mean because we're close to chicago we still have some of that but it's just it's just different you know mm -hmm. um and so we're both like type a enough that like we like that drive and all of that and so i guess the thing is here we're kind of generalizing east coast schools and i think that's kind of what i'm struggling with in a sense of why i like wanted to talk about this is because i think we do generalize east coast schools when there's every single type of school like possible almost um, you know, from small to large, from private to public, and everything, you know, and like in between. Yeah, even like political spectrum, like, yeah, mm -hmm. how they're grouped. Yeah, especially like when you get to like some of the southern schools, which I mean, sort of like a blurry gray area of if they're considered East Coast or not, but because um, like William Mary is sort of the south, but sort of the East Coast. I don't know, it's like sort of a weird gray area, but. Um, yeah, and that's where I think it's, like, very interesting because we both, we were talking about before we filmed how there's sort of this, like, unspoken bias that, like, I don't know, I definitely felt, like, not super comfortable talking about, like, oh, I'm moving to the East Coast because I think people assume, like, you're privileged and, um, I don't know, that they, that you, they assume you think you're smarter than them, sort of. They're, like, more prestigious. Yeah, like, which is, like, just not really true universally, but I, like, get where the stereotype comes from because most of, like, those Ivy League schools are on the East Coast, well, all the Ivy Leagues are on east coast and at the same time i don't know it's just hard because like the top schools are on the east coast but then there's still good schools elsewhere uh, but then statistically more of the good schools are on the east coast um before this i was looking at like the 2020 um i think it was like newsweek or something the rankings for 2020 of colleges and about half of them are like that east coast like new england like um you know north of the mason dixon line sort of schools and and it's definitely slightly biased, I think, because they are historical. Yeah, at the same time, like, the statistics come from somewhere. Um, so, I don't know. I, like, guess I'm, like, struggling with knowing what the right answer is. And I guess there's not really a right answer. I think it's very, like, just individualistic of, like... Yeah. Well, and that's the thing. Every school is different. 
but I do think people make these sweeping generalizations and like stereotype and I think it goes both ways because people like on the east coast certainly stereotype people from the midwest and often will be surprised that I'm from the midwest like I don't think I give off that vibe anymore after not living here for four years but I think it, it depends on like what you want out of your college experience a little bit too because we were talking how um for athletes like the big 10 schools are almost in the midwest so if that's something you want to go for like it's gonna be different so it's really what you're, what you're looking for yeah it's a different type of experience i mean it's a much bigger a lot of you know much bigger schools and i mean it definitely makes sense for a lot of people who are from the midwest like i totally get why like a lot of people go to the public schools here i mean it's affordable it's close by um there's i mean massive programs for lots of things especially stem like if you're interested in stem there's so many good schools here um, and even some of those more elite schools like Northwestern and New Chicago are here. It's just there's not like the same like percentage, I would say, um, of like schools that are kind of that more like the way people treat like those schools as like being elite, mm -hmm. which again is slightly arbitrary. I also I think it just really has to do with the history too. It's just like how old the institutions are. Yeah. I think that's a big part of There's it. There's a greater recognition of the older the school well, is. Well, and they shape the U.S. college system in a way, too. Definitely. Yeah. Um, well, and that's where William Mary is kind of an interesting case study because they're considered a public ivy because, like I think I said, um, they're like the second oldest in the, in, the, uh, in the U.S. system, but they're also public. So I think there's also this, like, elitism over if you can afford to go to a private school and again we're very privileged fully acknowledge that that we can afford to go to those schools um but that's where it's not completely a meritocracy i think people treat it like it is but it's definitely not i mean there's so many factors we're kind of just rambling a lot in this video but i hope it's fascinating because i think it is <laughs> <laughs> well and that's where it's also interesting because like you go to an east coast school but it's not a big name like i did well, one is NYU is a name brand school, I would say, and that gets name recognition even here. William and Mary doesn't, though. On the East Coast, people know it, but here they don't, which is fascinating to me as well. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I feel like on the East Coast, Mount Holyoke does have, like, a name recognition. But here, I don't but think it does. But here, almost no one knows what the school is right and well, and that's where you get into this like next layer of like almost elitism of people on the east coast thinking they're maybe better sometimes than other people like i mean it is sometimes a bubble especially like in new york and then there's a larger bubble of like the east coast i would say in general especially like the new england like tri-state area um that kind of thing through dc maybe i would say roughly i don't know yeah. i think there is like a bit of a bubble um, that sometimes people forget about like everything west of that. Um, <laughs> no, I do get that sense. Like, especially like New York, like the only p place people care about sometimes is like California besides New York, which is so interesting to me. Like, cause there's a lot of Californians who move to New York cause they're very similar culturally in some ways. No, I do think there definitely is a bubble though. Like just like, but there's also a bubble here too, which is where you get these in groups and out groups. Mm -hmm. And cause people here are like always assuming like, oh, you're going to go to one of these like 10 big 10 schools but that's like not everyone right it's not everyone but then you also feel like you're part of the out group when you leave mm -hmm. um which i mean it's not like the worst thing ever but it's definitely very real i would say if you are from like a smaller community which we're not really from that small no. community but still i don't know what we're saying <laughs> i feel like you're gonna get hate on this video from people who are from the midwest and i'm like no that's not the point of this but but also we're saying like not every east coast school is good like it's just not that simple like there's so many different types of schools on the east coast and like also the west coast like the uc are like some of the best public schools and they're just some of the best schools in general you know and they're public which is amazing to me like i think so many other states could serve to like get to that place you know no but i mean just really the bubble i think is like a big thing because like even just talking to people like when i say like oh i'm from like chicago they're like oh yeah sometimes i forget there's just like places like west of here yeah people just like don't even like comprehend and like know. they don't mean it like offensively they just like are don't like just being honest they're, like yeah i just like i've lived here like all my life i haven't like gone yeah lots of people have never been to chicago which i'm like that's so weird to me but i guess it makes sense because if i like wasn't from here i probably wouldn't have either so I guess for people who are like interested in moving from the Midwest to the East Coast or literally anywhere else in the United States, I mean, because even like if you're from like further west, it's obviously an even bigger, bigger commitment. Oh, like, yeah. You're going to have to fly cross country no matter what. Which or, also just gets more expensive. Right. It just like it continues to add up. So I guess for anyone, I think what 
at least for me what I miss the most is just being super close with my family all the time and the accessibility um and kind of like it definitely can get lonely I think when you move to these places where you don't know anyone like that is so hard um yeah definitely I agree with that yeah so especially in the transition period it's just like as you're still figuring out who you're hanging out with you can't just like rely on like your high school group of friends yeah because like when you stay more local more likely you'll know some people. people it's not a good or a bad thing necessarily it just it is just what pushes you want you. yeah and that's where i don't regret doing it but that's for I. me like one of the harder parts because like i haven't had like the social connections i think i might have had somewhere else it does like give you a fresh start if you want that like that's true if you had like a rough time like socially in high school it gives you a chance to meet new people and like not come to this new chapter of your life mm -hmm. with like the past with you you can like yeah well and i guess it's a fresh opportunity to be yourself in a way like mm -hmm. that's one thing i love about new york is you can literally be anyone you want to be ever and i don't feel like this weirdo but when i come back here i feel like no one necessarily like understands like what i do or like who i am there but i never feel any judgment about that when i'm in new york which is sort of ironic in a way but that's one thing that's like super cool about new york is like you can be anyone and no one will judge you I mean, maybe they'll judge you but it doesn't even matter because you just see like the weirdest things in the city so <laughs> i feel like that's part of why i like it as much as it's like sort of elitist i think also you can like almost like be in any industry or like you know study anything work in anything like that's definitely very true because like i'll always tell people when they're like i mean i still get asked this all the time are you gonna stay in new york like yes but also it's like a career choice like i couldn't do what i want to do here like i just couldn't um it would be very hard and it's harder in new york because it's competitive but it's the opposite problem here like the jobs are there yeah i mean i can't really speak to career stuff mm -hmm. yet just because yeah but even just like being a humanities student I mean, I don't know enough about the humanities programs elsewhere, but I mean, I just think in general the colleges are good, but also mm -hmm. like it just varies college to college and there's plenty of good schools elsewhere too. That's where just look at the programs at whatever Yeah, schools. I think the biggest thing to take away from this is like you need to just like focus on your individual wants and needs in a college and like how close you want to be to your family. Do you want to push yourself outside your comfort zone? Be more independent. You can still be those things closer to your, your parents if like you're going to a school close by, but you have to like consciously make an effort to be more independent. Because it would be easy to just, to just go back. You know, yeah. If you're like an hour away. Yeah, exactly. So kind of that part of it and just like finding the right program for you. Um, because I mean, there's good programs, you know, in all regions and um, definitely like public versus private makes a big difference so and there is good private and good public schools exactly mm -hmm. it's just there's this like hype around about private schools i feel like get better recognition and are like more esteemed even though i, I think there's plenty of schools that are comparable that are public so don't think it has to be quite like that and so i think it's just it's a big decision to move from what the midwest to the east coast but it can be like the right choice if you kind of relate to our narratives here and I don't know how your mindset on some goals out there it can be really awesome yeah. I mean neither of us regret moving to the east coast no I don't regret it yeah I mean I don't regret it and now I'm starting my like young adult life there so I think of this as like my childhood home being the midwest I'm from like my hometown is here but like now I like I'm a New Yorker I live in New York and you know all of that so which technically you're still sort of living here i'm in this like awkward yeah that's just part of college though but i do think kind of what we were saying before like where do you want to live after college it does kind of make a difference where you go to school a little bit depending on like what career choice you want to make because you'll make yeah. connections like mm -hmm. with people out there yeah and like yeah you'll still know people where you like grew up but like but it's also it's not the same people way grow up and like move elsewhere and you know even if they're still in like the same region all oh, food for thought <laughs> yes this is just our musings on the whole like different regional college experiences and you know going to east coast schools and i think sometimes people like assuming certain things about you and it is a privilege but also like there's just so many different college experiences and um you know we're very fortunate we're very thankful that we get to go to the schools that we did slash do but also there's plenty of other good schools so take everything we said with a grain of salt but definitely comment below your thoughts i'm very curious to hear other people's opinions on this topic because i don't really know i don't know this is just something yeah. i've had in the back of my brain since picking a college of like me assuming other people like assume things about me <laughs> I'm like, no i feel I the same 
same way. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know if other people feel like this. So I mean, do, sometimes you know. it's nice because when I just say, like, oh, I go to Mount Holyoke, sometimes they're just like, oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> I don't ask where it is, so I kind of can get by without that, like. Yeah, but I mean, NYU has, like, an interesting connotation in a lot of different ways, and I have plenty of other videos about that, <laughs> so we need to be done here. That's, that's the tea, folks. <laughs> Um, yeah, I don't know. Comment down below if you want to see more videos of my lovely sister. I feel like we made some good ones, but I don't know. Maybe there's more things that I don't know. you want to know. I'm not really sure. And I think that's about it. Alright, thanks for joining me. Anytime. <laughs> I'll be here until who knows. Yeah, TBD, really, though. Uh... Alright, bye. <laughs>